So World War 3 was set to launch its open beta on the 29th of September 2022. The beta was initially supposed to launch back in March, but they pushed it back to June. June. Then when June came around and it didn't come out, the devs just kind of went quiet until the end of August, beginning of September to announce a date once again. Except this time around, they were actually going to drop it. How I knew was because they sent out emails to content creators and streamers, or just anyone that bought into it back in 2018, about three days prior to test it early as a thank you for buying it back in 2018. So that's what I did. I attempted to play it on the first day, made a video on it, which if you want to watch, I'll have a link to that in the description at the top right. But basically what the closed beta felt like to me was like a light version of 2042's love letter to the fans. I wasn't pissed off. I wasn't angry. I was just disappointed because I would have thought that by now they would have had more than just the same maps that we've been playing since 2018 to show off. Yes, I know that they're not the exact same maps. The developers did put some changes to them, but I already know the look and feel of them. The changes feel so minimal to me that it doesn't even register. If anything, the changes ruin the flow of the map because most of the time I'm more running than actually fighting people from objective to objective. By now, I thought they would have had more than just a two game mode that they've been showcasing since 2018 four years and these guys never thought you know what maybe we should add like another game mode or two people are probably gonna think it's getting a little stale to have the same ones for four years but no they didn't even do that i think that if the game just had those issues it probably would just sit at around six out of ten for me because i think that there is quite a bit of content for newer players to come in and grind out because the gameplay and gunplay is good the progression system is very rewarding there's enough maps to keep people in the game for newer players I mean, for me, I'm annoyed because I've been playing these maps since 2018, but to newer players, it's going to feel good. The only issues that I really have with the core game itself is that the sound is kind of all over the place. Sometimes you just don't hear people, like they sneak up on you and you never hear a sound. The voices can get a little loud. Gun sounds are not that great and they're kind of repetitive, like for each gun that you have. And I'm pretty sure that they kept putting me in European servers because every time that I would look at my ping, I'd always have like a red or yellow. The armor penetration system is um, iffy, pretty unbalanced. There are some guns that will penetrate fairly easily and then there are some guns that don't do anything at all I had a buddy of mine who used the raw pistol and was killing people like crazy But then he switched over to his SMG that used the same ammo type and it was less effective How does that make sense? But if it was just those issues, I'd leave it at a 6 out of 10 What brings the score down for me is when I wanted to play with my friends I had to go through their awful system of trying to connect parties and friendships and even when we got together sometimes who wouldn't connect to the server at the same time or the guy would get booted to the front it's like i want to be able to play this game with my buddies and the game just does not allow that most of the time it's a freaking hassle you have to fight tooth and nail just to play together and another thing that brings it down is just how bad the servers were again in the beta i kept getting either error 151 or authentication errors fetching data awful just awful probably brings it down to a four for the beta that was basically like my review for it i thought that newer players were definitely gonna have a better time than i was but boy was i wrong because on the first day the game actually peaked it got more players than it ever had at least according to steam charts and on the first day it seemed like everything was working the servers didn't completely die it was the next day where i looked at a comment asking me how to download the game and i thought it was a weird comment because it's as simple as downloading the game on steam or at least i thought so i decided that i was just gonna make like a simple video to show how to do it but little did i know what hardship the newer people were actually gonna go through because not only does this game have a launcher which why the hell would it have a launcher if it's already on steam that doesn't make any sense to me but anyways i came to realize just how bad the download speed was for the launcher because i was trying to do like a simple video on it so i uninstalled it and then reinstalled it on steam and then the launcher popped up and then i clicked the install button and i let it sit there for maybe i don't know three hours and i come back to realize that the thing isn't even downloaded i'm like what the hell why is this taking so long i come back the next day and it's still freaking downloading like you gotta be kidding me why is this taking so long i think i saw someone on reddit post a pic of this and it was like a hundred something days for it to actually download i'm like what that's ridiculous it really is all right so already off to a rocky start would i say that it's worse than 2018 um not necessarily i don't think 2018's version had a launcher if i remember correctly i think it just downloaded straight from steam so that's definitely a negative in my opinion Opinion. But what this game in 2022 does that 2018 doesn't do is actually allow you to get into the game. Well, 
sometimes obviously not all the time because i've been seeing like so many complaints and people just bombarding their twitter and posting multiple posts on reddit about how the game just isn't working they were posting a lot of the screenshots that i had actually talked about in the beta that i thought maybe they could fix it within the three days but it's clear that they didn't and now they're really paying for it because you go to their steam and man sheesh overwhelmingly negative with a bunch of mixed scores in between can't say that i'm surprised it's just insane to me you know because because they didn't really fix the issue that messed up their previous launch, which was the servers. I mean, the servers aren't as bad as 2018, but they still have pretty bad problems. As I've seen multiple messages from my subscribers send me multiple pictures of the game taking forever to download, or of them not even being able to get into the game, the servers not working when they were supposed to be. It's just a mess. How they thought that this was good for them to launch in, it's just beyond me. Like, why would you? launch it this way the only thing that really comes to mind is maybe they're running out of money maybe i can't really think of any other reason than wasting my dot games money and time but whatever the case four years man four years and they could not fix the thing that botched their game last time so this launch is definitely not scot-free but there are still people that are playing the game so maybe it's not all doom and gloom yeah and like i said if you could get past all of the issues that it has like the really long download the adding friends non sense and the 151 issues then i think you could actually have a decent time with the game i think what's keeping this alive is the fact that it's free to play because if it wasn't free to play i don't think there'd be a lot of people buying into this game and playing it as often as they do the gameplay and gunplay is not bad and i think the best part about it is that the progression system rewards you when you do things so it does feel good in some respects i think free to play players can definitely get a lot out of this game but world war 3 definitely needs to do something about these servers because this is getting ridiculous ridiculous if they want to keep this fan base going they better hurry the hell up and i really shouldn't even be saying that because they had four years it really does kind of make me wonder what the hell they've really been doing i mean i know that they haven't been doing nothing because they did fix up the gunplay i think it definitely feels a lot better than the previous iteration but does that really require four years I wonder if we're dealing with a game that's kind of been mismanaged i'm not entirely sure have any of you guys like talked with the people behind the scenes like maybe you could tell me what's going on there but whatever the case i'm not gonna play this game until it's fully fixed i'm not gonna sit around trying to figure out something that should have been figured out four years ago i'm just gonna wait for modern warfare 2 or something else world war 3 had its chance with me and they pretty much wrong i'm gonna end the video if you guys enjoy the fact that i cover games like world war 3 then be sure to like the video share the video comment down below if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on world war 3 or any other game that i decide to cover if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon or hop on that join button send a thank you in the comments any donation helps i'm always making videos well, with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.